In contact, the source mode switches the sample playback mode of the currently selected groups. The most common modes are sampler and DFD. In today's video tutorial, we'll take a look at wrapping your head around the sampler and DFD source modes. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADSRtoots. The source module is located at the very beginning of contact signals flow and acts as the source of all audio signals. It provides access to the underlying sample playback engine and can't be removed from an instrument. It operates in one of nine playback modes, all of which are optimized for handling different audio material. Today we'll look at two of the most common modes, sampler and DFD. Sampler is a traditional sample playback engine that keeps all sample data in your computer's RAM. And DFD, which means direct from disk, is a high performance solution for streaming samples from disk in real time. Let's start with Sampler. This is, this is a traditional digital sampler that stores sample data in system memory, reads it out from memory, and applies any required transposition by resampling the audio data in real time. The sampler module is very efficient and draws little power from the whole CPU, but most of the available parameters in this mode can be modulated. Remember that all adjustments you make will affect all groups that are currently selected for editing in the group editor. So always make sure you're aware of what the status is of edit all groups. And you make another group so this can actually do something. So wipe on, wipe off. So let's take a look at the controls. Tune changes the playback pitch within one octave up or down. Since this is a traditional sampler mode, changes to your pitch will always affect your playback tempo as well. If you want to adjust these parameters independently of each other, switch to one of the tone machine or time machine modes. This control works in semitone steps when moved, but you can make finer adjustments by holding down the shift key as you move the knob. Reverse. This plays all samples in the group in reverse. Note that when this button is activated, playback will start at the end marker of a zone. So if there are a few seconds of silence at the end of a zone, the sound will be delayed. Tracking. When this is enabled, the pitch of sample playback will be transposed along with the key position. If your group contains zones that are mapped across several keys and should be played tonally, tracking needs to be activated, or else all of the keys in the zone will play at the same pitch. If you want to keep the pitch of a sample constant across multiple keys, or provide a separate zone for each key, um, you can deactivate it. MIDI. This sets the MIDI port and channel this group will respond to. Use this only if you want different groups to respond to different MIDI channels. Otherwise, set the instrument's MIDI channel in the instrument header and leave this setting as, as it is. So this MIDI channel affects the entire instrument, all groups. And this is a per group MIDI, MIDI um, channel setting. Release trigger. When activated, samples in this group will be triggered when a MIDI note off command is received versus being triggered when a MIDI, a MIDI note on command is received. This function is what allows you to create release samples. With these, you can recreate the natural release sound of an instrument when a key is being released. Note that if your release sample has a loop, there's no way to tell contact to stop playing it from the outside. So you should make sure your group has a volume envelope or else it will keep playing indefinitely. T, which stands for time. This is only visible if release trigger is activated. And what happens if, if you set this value um, to anything other than zero, contact will count from that value backwards in milliseconds when it receives a note. Then it will stop the timer and provide its current value as a modulation source when it receives a corresponding note off value. This way, you can make your instrument respond to note durations. Note mono. 
This is this also is only visible if release trigger is activated. This button affects how release samples will respond to note repetitions. When it's activated, playing a note repeatedly will cut off any previous release samples that are still sounding so that only one release sample will play at any time. High quality interpolation. This drop down menu allows you to choose from a list of three resampling algorithms of various quality. Only samples that are played at, at a different note other than the root key will need to be resampled. The standard setting uses the old contact algorithm, which has an okay resampling quality and is light on the CPU. The high and perfect settings select high quality resampling algorithms, which eliminate all audible artifacts, especially when you transpose upwards. But the drawback is that these, these options need more CPU resources. Note that while the CPU demand of standard is, is constant, the high and perfect settings will use more CPU resources the further they need to transpose a sample from its root key. So if you play a sample two octaves above its original pitch, they'll generate a higher CPU load than if you play it only a semitone higher. Now let's move on to DFD. DFD stands, stands for direct from disk and is a source module mode for playing very large samples in real time without having to load all sample data into RAM. When using DFD, only the first part of each sample is loaded into RAM. And when a sample is played, the first part is played instantly from RAM while the rest of it is streamed from your hard disk. The controls are the same as in sampler mode, but there are a few things you should be aware of when using DFD. The first thing is the maximum number of voices will be lower compared to sampler module um, or the sampler mode because of latency and throughput of your hard disk will be the bottleneck for sampling performance. Of course, if you use the SSD, the latency and throughput will be minimal, if any at all. If you're using a regular hard drive, mechanical, you can optimize your overall voice count by putting only groups and instruments that access very large samples into DFD mode and keep the others in sampler mode. And that's the beauty of contact. You can mix and match by group. So one group can be DFD, another can be, uh, let's turn this off. We'll make this one sampler. Make this one DFD. So sampler DFD. So one instrument, two groups, each using a different sampler mode. Another thing is don't try to use DFD mode with samples that reside on a CD ROM. Copy them to a hard disk first. And next, although DFD mode minimizes RAM usage in comparison to sampler mode, it still has a, a noticeable memory footprint as it has to preload the start of all samples into memory. You can switch between DFD and sampler mode at any time, but when you switch from DFD to sampler, there may be a slight pause because the entire sample needs to be loaded into RAM. So just keep that in mind when you, whenever you switch between sampler and DFD. All right, the preload buffer. When you load an instrument, preloaded RAM is allocated based on the instrument's preload buffer setting. And you can see that here, DFD preload buffer size. This specifies how much of each sample you want preloaded into RAM. The amount of RAM needed to load the first part of every sample in an instrument is the used instrument memory. You can calculate used instrument memory by multiplying the number of samples in an instrument by the preload buffer size. So to recap, used instrument memory equals the number of samples times preload buffer size. As the preloaded part of the sample is being played back, the hard disk fetches the rest of the sample. The amount of time, which is fractions of a second, is determined by the preload buffer size. If the buffer is big, more of the sample is loaded in memory and less of it is streamed from disk. And if the buffer is small, less of the sample is loaded in memory and more of it is streamed from disk. So let me, let me repeat that. 
If the buffer is big, more of the sample is loaded in memory and less of it is streamed from disk. And if the buffer is small, less of the sample is loaded in memory and more of it is streamed from disk. So keep that in mind when you go to adjust the, the preload buffer size. So the preload buffer size is set in the instrument options in the DFD tab. So here you have your instrument preload buffer size. It can also be set globally in the memory tab of the main control panel options as well. This setting will override any preload buffer settings at the instrument level. So here in the memory tab of the options, you have the instrument preload buffer size and you have to check this checkbox to tell contact to override every instrument preload buffer size. So in my opinion, um, every instrument is different. I like to set my preload buffer size per instrument. So I leave this option off and I only set it in the at the instrument level. Also in the instrument options, you can enable or disable background loading. When enabled, this allows instant playback for samples which are not yet loaded. If you have a slow hard disk or are experiencing glitches or audio dropouts while playing during background loading, disable this option. Um, I'm on an SSD, um, but my samples are on a, a regular HD, HDD and it's a 5400 RPM hard drive and I, I don't have any issues with, with um, background loading so I, I leave this enabled. But um, if you have an older machine with a slower hard drive um, and you get glitches when you are trying to play a sample as soon as the instrument loads and disabling this might help you. So Native Instruments recommends leaving the preload buffer size to the default value of 60 KB but let's look at the pros and cons of increasing or decreasing this setting. Increasing the preload buffer size will utilize more memory and less disk. This can avoid voice dropouts caused by disk overload but will increase the instrument's memory footprint. Decreasing a brief preload buffer size utilizes more disk and less memory. While this will lower the memory usage of the instrument, it will require that your hard disk work harder and faster. So just, let's just recap that. So when you increase the preload buffer size, your computer will use more memory and less disk. So if, if in a scenario where you have a lot of memory and a slower hard drive, this makes sense to increase the preload buffer size. And the gain that you can get by doing so, you can avoid voice dropouts um, if your disk is overloaded. Um, so as long as you have the memory, this may be an option for you. So now, decreasing the preload buffer size, this will use more of your disk and less memory. So a scenario for decreasing the preload buffer size will be if you are on an SSD or a RAID 0 um, RAID array. And so what this will do is this will use more of your hard disk and less memory. So this will lower the memory that your computer uses, um, but it will require that your hard disk um, be faster and work harder. So keep this in mind when you are adjusting your preload buffer size. Now that we know everything behind these two sampler modes, um, sampler mode is pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, DFD is, is a little, a little special. And we can come to the following conclusion um, when it comes to DFD and, and memory on your computer. The first is preload buffers can be adjusted to meet requirements and memory. So keep that in, always keep that in mind when using DFD. Also, your preload memory consumption is directly related to the number of samples used, so it might be necessary to set the buffer size low when using an instrument with high sample counts and limited memory. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds. ADSR Contact Tutorials, Supercharger Contact Skills. This is DJ Nice signing off until next time. Now go make some music.